Hey everyone, I want to talk about uh, safety in the BMW i3 today. Uh, the other day I was next to a van similar to this, but it was actually a construction van, so the visibility was even worse. And a uh, lady was walking down the parking lot as I was re uh, reversing the car and literally walked into the uh, back of my car. Luckily, I wasn't moving very fast, so it wasn't a big issue, but um, uh, the woman actually said that she did not hear me backing up at all. So based on that, I think that uh, a good episode might be looking at what can be done as far as activating the reverse alarm or buzzer sound that uh, is built into the car and see if that's worth doing. So I have a VP uh, OBD connector that's uh, Bluetooth to connect to my phone and connect with uh, Bimmer code and it plugs in under the dash on the driver's side and in Bimmer code under instrument cluster you can see there's an acoustic signal for reversing and I made that uh, active in Bimmer code and then went ahead and uh, uploaded that uh, code change. So with the reverse uh, signal actuated using Bimmer code uh, looks like if I put in reverse I'm getting an internal code. Now, of course, that's just this sonar in the back. But there's no external buzzer, so it's just the internal sound. So it's probably not what I'm trying to accomplish by having an external alarm or buzzer. So based on this outcome, I need to come up with a way to make a uh, external buzzer sound for this uh, particular car. So here's the prototype with the uh, 555 timer and a little piezoelectric buzzer. Uh, basically just doing a quick on-off uh, pulse to the uh, piezo buzzer so uh, it'll sound like a, a backup alarm. And I've got it powered by a 9 volt battery for now. So it sounds like it would be loud enough to get people's attention that you're backing up even with this simple circuit. So now the only uh, issue is how to package it and get it uh, connected to the reverse lamp uh, power supply. Okay, we got all the components put onto a little tiny uh, circuit board with some jumpers uh, put together. I've currently got it hooked up to a, uh, there's the uh, serial number for the uh, buzzer. Connected to nine volt battery, just for test. You can see everything's working. So I pulled the schematic for the lower tail light assembly schematic and it looks like the uh, violet line goes to the reverse light from the BDC and the brown line is the uh, ground line. So those are the two lines we want to tap into to power the signal. So here's a schematic of the actual uh, signal or generator itself. It's basically a 555 timer uh, with uh, two different resistors and a capacitor to make a uh, pulse sound. You can play around with those values if you want to change the uh, pulse frequencies as well. I do want to mention that I had to add the uh, rectifying circuit from the uh, purple or violet line uh, as well because uh, it's a uh, pulse frequency signal so it will not run the uh, 555 timer by itself. The rectifier basically just takes the pulse signal that's coming out of the BDC and gives me a, a 11 and a half volt signal roughly that's uh, pretty consistent. For the case, I just put together something from the 3D printer, um, drew something up. It's just uh, trying to make a waterproof case and a little bit of a uh, signal deflector as well. And then printed it up on my 3D printer. And uh, uh, with the electronics inside, I seal it up with some uh, liquid tape uh, to make sure there's no water leaks going inside and a little uh, rubber seal between the piezo buzzer and the internals. Okay, so the plan is to take the small uh, piezoelectric buzzer and try to mount it about here on the car. But to do that, I need to pull out the uh, the bumper, it looks like, to be able to wire it up to the uh, reverse light, which I use for the power supply. So whenever it goes in reverse, it'll turn on the buzzer. It looks like you have to uh, remove this screw on both sides. Uh, there's the screw in the center as well. And then there's several screws uh, back down in this region and then clip the clips that attach this side piece uh, to the bumper piece here. So we'll do that next. So it looks like it's an eight millimeter screw that has to be removed. So I just do a quick simple ratchet on it. And 
comes out pretty easily, no problem. And this screw is also has to come out, which is a eight millimeter. So the third screw has to come out as this one here, also eight millimeter. So once you're behind the uh, wheel well, you've got the cover removed, you can see that there's these little clips that uh, need to be removed as well. So you just put a screwdriver in there and pop them off. And there's three or four along the back that will then dis disconnect the uh, bumper from the uh, rear fender. Now you can see these clips a little bit more clearly where these have to be pushed in to uh, get out of the slots in the uh, fender itself. Uh, I did have to loosen and unscrew some of the bolts along the bottom to be able to pull it out. So just be aware of that. And I loosened the one on the top on that side as well. Uh, but now it just slides out and you can see now I have access to the uh, rear lower light connector. And the purple and brown wire would be the power to the reverse light and the ground line. Uh, you can also just FYI, you can see where the connectors are for the insert in the bumper, the white insert where it connects. So um, if you need to replace that particular part, which I might have to in the future because I did have some uh, strange damage on it slightly, like in this area, which I've been living with, but uh, I'm not dealing with that right today. So we'll go ahead and splice into that wire and see if we can... Uh, get some power for the uh, buzzer. So in summary, I've had multiple occasions where pedestrians have either come close to or have come into the side of my car when I'm backing out of a parking spot, and it's a bit of a concern for me. Um, one other thing I could do is to back into the parking spots, which might be a simple uh, solution to this problem, actually. The uh, software activation of the reverse alarm is an internal alarm only, so it doesn't really, it's not really loud enough to be heard outside, so it's not really a solution, at least with these older generation uh, i3s. Um, hacking into the reverse light uh, does seem to be able to work. Uh, you do have to be careful about uh, rectifying the signal from the uh, reverse light, otherwise you, you will have a problem with any kind of a circuit you set up with that. And finally, the uh, bumper removal is a little more involved than I was originally planning, but it's not uh, that much more difficult to do and easily doable as a DIY thing. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope you find this useful for your own uh, i3 DIY projects.